Hi guys, welcome to lecture number 5. In the previous lecture, we have seen the construction working and IV characteristics of SCR that is the silicon controlled rectifier. Okay, it is a three terminal device and having four layer and we have seen some mode, three modes of SCR. First one is the reverse blocking mode in which what we are doing, we are supplying VAK less than zero and we are not giving gate current. So in this case, SCR is behaving like similar to power diode in reverse bias condition second we have seen forward blocking mode in this what we are doing we are supplying VAK greater than 0 and we are not giving gate current then also it will block the positive voltage and it will not allow the current to flow okay and in the third case we have seen that is the forward conducting mode in forward conducting mode what we are we are doing we are supplying VAK greater than 0 and also we are giving gate current means ig is not equal to zero so if you are giving the gate current then what will happen the junction j2 have some deflation with so with the help of gate current what we are doing we are neutralizing the stored charge present across this junction j2 in forward conduction mode okay so because of which the width of the depletion region and uh, depletion layer decreases and it is, starts conducting so these all the things we have discussed in the previous lecture in this lecture we will see the turn on method of scr what are the methods available which makes the scr into turn on state okay so we have seen in the previous lecture in order to turn on the scr what we have to do we have to make anode current greater than the latching current if anode current will be greater than or equal to latching current then scr will gets into on a state that is the definition of latching current latching current is the minimum amount of anode current required to turn on the scr so if anode current will be greater than the latching current then SCR, scr will go into the on state so how will i make anode current greater than the latching current so there are five ways of doing this first first one is the forward voltage triggering this we have explained in the previous lecture that is when vak is greater than vbo this is the vbo right so when the input voltage vak will be greater than vbo then what will happen junction j1 j2 is already sorted in the forward blocking mode and j3 is open this is the condition okay and this is my vak so when vak is greater than vbo vbo is the breakover voltage of this junction j1 okay junction j3 have highly doped so it will get sorted initially only so whole voltage will drop across junction j1 so junction j1 have some voltage withstand capability that is vbo so when vak is greater than vbo then this junction will break down and it will starts conducting and also i told you uh, in the previous lecture that this is not the safe practice because we are giving high input voltage we want to turn on the scr even by supplying less voltage so for, so for that what we need to do we, we need to supply the gate current so even by supplying less forward voltage we trigger the scr by supplying gate current also if we will give supply input supply greater than bbo then this junction j1 will get permanently damaged so we will not use this method to turn on the scr second one is the dv by dt triggering what do you mean by this as we know that when you will give vak greater than zero then what will happen this j1 and j3 will be in forward bias and j2 will be in reverse bias so if you will give vak greater than zero then whole voltage will drop across this junction j2 means this junction j2 will have some stored charge like this means it will behave like a capacitor having some voltage let us say v1 so v1 will be vak okay now tell me this junction j2 is behaving like a capacitance and we know that in capacitor ic is equal to c dv by dt and here ic is nothing but anode current so we can say that anode current is equal to c dv by dt okay so if there is more dv by dt then anode current will be more anode current will increase and if anode current will be greater than your latching current then what will happen this scr will go into the on state so we can say that if c dv by dt is greater than equal to latching current then scr gets on got it 
means what is the critical value of db by dt the critical value of db by dt is equal to ic upon c sorry this is not ic this is latching current il il upon c this is the critical value of db by dt okay so this is the second method to turn on the scr now see the third method third method is light triggering this is my junction j1 and this is junction j2 in forward blocking mode when vak is greater than zero then whole voltage will drop across junction j2 and this is junction j3 okay this is the scenario anyhow we have to remove the stored charge across this junction j2 here the stored charge is like this so how will i remove this stored charge present across the junction j2 by supplying a proper light what we are doing in order to decrease this depletion width we are injecting photon means we are putting light on this junction j2 so we know that light have some photons so when it will strike to this junction j2 then what will happen it will generate some electron and hole across this junction j2 which neutralize the stored charge across this junction j2 and finally the depletion width decreases and the scr starts conduct got it in this way also we can trigger the scr now the fourth one is the thermal triggering thermal triggering is similar to light triggering triggering only what we are doing we are increasing this junction temperature across this, this j2 so what will happen this junction j2 have some stored charge like this and it is behaving like a capacitor now what we will do we will increase the temperature of this junction j2 with increase in temperature there is a movement of electron and hole which neutralize the stored charge carrier present across this junction j2 so which again turn on the scr now the last method that is the best method to trigger the scr is the gate triggering in gate triggering there are two types of uh, triggering method used in scr first one is the continuous gate triggering and second one is the pulse gate triggering so what we are doing we are giving vak greater than zero and after that we are supplying gate current ig continuously so if you will supply gate current ig and once the anode current will become greater than the or equal to latching current then scr gets on now if you will remove this gate current then also scr will remain into on state right so why to supply gate current continuously so in continuous gate signal we are supplying gate gate current continuously which results into losses ig square into rg where rg is the resistance across the gate terminal which results in losses so we don't need to supply the gate current continuously suppose i am supplying gate current continuously then there will be losses in the circuit so what i will do i will go with the pulse triggering what is what do you mean by pulse triggering in pulse triggering we are giving gate current in pulse and this pulse have some width let us say this is t1 and it is remain in off state for time t2 then again it is triggered by having some pulse width okay this is t1 so in this way by giving the suitable pulse width we can turn on the scr which results in decrease in the losses in this case losses across the gate cathode terminal will decrease that's why we are using pulse triggering method in order to turn on the scr now here we have to keep in mind one more thing this t1 T1 is the time for which you are giving the gate current. So this T1 must be greater than or equal to minimum T on time to turn on the SCR. That means you have to give the pulse width such that the anode current becomes greater than the latching current. Once the anode current becomes greater than the latching current, then you can turn off the gate current, no problem. But there must be some minimum pulse width required to turn on the scr that pulse width is t on minimum so t1 t1 is the time for which you are giving gate current must be greater than the minimum pulse width required to turn on the scr so this we have to keep in mind so these are the some of the triggering method which we used in order to turn on the scr now let us move to the scr protection first one is the overcurrent protection we know that scr have some voltage with a stand capability v and some highest peak current rating okay so if you will supply 
the current greater than this rated current then what will happen this SCR will get damaged so in over current protection what we are doing we are attaching one fuse in series with SCR so that whenever the current will go beyond the rated current then the fuse will break and in this way we can protect the SCR from over current now the second one is the over voltage protection suppose the SCR is designed to withstand 100 volt and if I will give the supply voltage greater than 100 volt then what will happen this SCR will get damaged so for over voltage protection what we will do we will attach a resistor a special type of resistor known as varistor this is the varistor parallel to SCR varistor is nothing but it is a metal oxide non-linear type of resistor whose VI characteristics is like this now the slope of this VI characteristics is nothing but the resistance so this is the non-linear type of resistance with increase in voltage the slope is decreasing here you can see that you are increasing the voltage then slope is decreasing means it offers less resistance here and for low voltage it offers high resistance here the slope is more here the slope is less so slope is less means resistance is less slope is more means resistance is high so for higher voltage the resistance it offers less resistance so whenever you will give supply having high voltage let us say i am giving the supply having high voltage v is very high then at that time this varistor will have low resistance low resistance means the voltage drop across this varistor will be less means this scr also have less voltage drop across it because of this varistor got it so in this way this varistor protects the scr from getting over voltage now the third one is dv by dt protection why we want dv by dt protection we have seen in the previous lecture that this this scr is having a junction capacitance ic is equal to c dv by dt now if this ic will be greater than il that is this ic is nothing but anode current so if anode current is greater than il means if dv by dt increases then ic will increase means anode current will increase and if anode current will become more than the latching current then scr gets on so if you don't want to turn on the scr then you need to reduce the dv by dt that's why dv by dt protection is necessary so what we are doing in dv by dt protection we are connecting one rc circuit parallel to scr like this this is rc circuit parallel to scr and this is my supply voltage vs so whenever you will give supply vs then this capacitor will charge okay now suppose i turn on this scr when th if this scr gets turned on then what will happen the capacitor discharges from this path okay and i is given by i naught e to the power minus t upon tau where i naught is equal to v upon r e to the power minus t upon tau so what will happen it won't allow sudden change in voltage capacitor this capacitor won't allow sudden change in voltage which we have seen in transient so it will oppose the dv by dt so whenever there is change in voltage across this scr this capacitor won't allow sudden change in voltage in this way it will protect the scr from getting turned on improperly fourth one is the di by dt protection why we need di, D, di by dt protection if there is more di by dt if di by dt is more then what will happen there is heat produced which damage the scr more di by dt means more heat that's why we need to protect the scr by inserting one inductor in series with scr what will happen inductor won't allow sudden change in current so there will be less di by dt di by dt will decrease got it now fifth one is the thermal protection so for protecting this scr as we know that scr is designed to withstand high rated voltage and high rated current means the power loss across this scr will be more so suitable heat sink is required so that the temperature of this scr will not go beyond its capability that's why suitable heat sink is attached with scr in order to protect thermally and the last but not the least that is the gate protection see this is gate okay this is anode and this is cathode so we need to protect this gate from overcurrent ig as well as we need to protect this gate to cathode voltage also 
so gate to cathode for protecting gate to cathode voltage what we will do we will insert Jener diode here parallel to this gate to cathode Jener diode will maintain constant gate to cathode voltage okay and this RG will limit the gate current so that the gate terminal won't get damaged so these are the some SCR protection if I will have to show all the protecting devices in one circuit then it will look like this this is SCR for thermal protection what we are doing we are inserting heat sink this is the heat sink it protects the SCR from heavy temperature this is varistor connected parallel to the SCR to protect over voltage this is RC circuit this is also known as rubber circuit which is used to limit dv by dt it won't allow sudden change in voltage across this scr that's why it is connected in parallel this is inductor why this is used to limit di by dt protection this is fuse used for over current protection now this is rg to limit the gate current okay and this is jena diode this is also used for gate protection to maintain the gate to cathode voltage we use Jena diode. This is also used CG with, in parallel with RG. What is the function of this? This removes the unwanted noise coming from the gate terminal. It will remove the unwanted noise so that the noise won't go into the gate terminal of SCR. So that's all about this lecture. In the next lecture, we will see diode circuit. If you guys understood the concept, then please like this video and subscribe for new updates. For doubt solving, you can join our Facebook group. Thanks for watching this video.